Hello and welcome to the history of Stargate. Today's episode, Janet Frazier. Janet Frazier was a chief medical officer of the newly formed Stargate Command. Starting as a captain, she later was promoted to major. She served for seven years up until her death in 2003. Following her death, Frazier's role as chief medical officer was temporarily taken over by Dr. Brightman before Dr. Carolyn Lamb. Frazier was once married to a man who discouraged her from joining the United States Air Force. They were no longer together as of 1997, and apparently they never had any children. In her seven and a half years at the SGC, she became one of the foremost experts in Gowald symbiotes. Having created a symbiote tank to keep Junior in, and having had opportunities to dissect dead symbiotes. As the chief medical officer of Stargate Command, Dr. Frazier had the authority to overrule those of any rank whatsoever when it came to medical issue. She used this to get the SGC's main flagship team, SG-1, into multiple occasions and ceasing experiment tests on SG team members. Her use of such authority once led SG-1 team leader Colonel Jack O'Neill to call her a Napoleonic power monger. 1997 When Frazier was first assigned to the Stargate team, she had to deal with the touched virus, to which she, Teal, and Dr. Daniel Jackson were immune. After Teal'c managed to secure a blood sample from the untouched, she realized that she and Daniel were immune because of their use of antihistamine for allergies. She was then able to synthesize a cure. When SG-1 traveled to Hanka and discovered that all the Hankins were wiped out by a virus, she and her team were called to examine SG-1. She cleared them and they went to tag the bodies in hazmat suits. They found a lone survivor named Cassandra. She examined her and found no trace of the virus in her system, and she was taken to Earth. Later, Cassandra felt ill, and she discovered the bomb in her chest. She and Dr. William Warren tried to remove it, but temporarily stopped her heart. They attempted to send Cassandra back to Hanka, but it was determined that the closer she got to the Stargate, the worse she became. They took her to an abandoned nuclear facility, and since she was no longer in proximity to the gate, the bomb broke down in her system. Afterwards, Dr. Frazier adopted Cassandra. 1998. When SG-1 returned from Altar, she performed an examination on Colonel Jack O'Neill and found no heartbeat. She then took his blood and upon seeing his blood was white, O'Neill used a scalpel to cut into his arm and found that he was an android. When SG-1 returned from the planet Torella and Dr. Daniel Jackson became ill, she determined that he was suffering from withdrawals from the sarcophagus. While he was recovering, he attacked her and escaped. Fortunately, she was unharmed. 1999 When SG-1 captured Apophis, she did her best to keep him alive, but without a sarcophagus, his body began to age at a rapid pace. He and his host eventually died and were turned over to Solkar. When Dr. Daniel Jackson switched bodies with Michello, she did everything she could to keep him alive until they were switched back. During a foothold situation at Stargate Command, the Strawgoth used the Mimic Imaging device to impersonate Dr. Frazier. In the year 2000, when SG-1 returned from P4X884 with no memory of their mission, she discovered the device in their brains that was causing them to see Ergo. At some point after Samantha Carter was promoted to Major, Frazier was also promoted. The first time she appeared as a Major, was when she treated SG-1 after they were exposed to radiation on P7X377. She helped Major Samantha Carter perform tests on the Isis jar and then did an autopsy on Isis's dead symbiote. She later accompanied Carter and Dr. Daniel Jackson to Egypt to try and stop Osiris. When they arrived, they found Dr. Stephen Raynar badly beaten. She was able to treat him, but Osiris escaped in his ship. 2001. She tested Shufu's blood and found ninites like the ones found on the planet Argos when Shufu put Dr. Daniel Jackson into a dream state to teach him. She could not wake him or determine what was happening. 
He later awakened on his own. When SG-5 and Dr. Daniel Jackson became depressed and suicidal, she determined their neural activity was too low. It was later determined that the light matrix hologram in the Gowald Pleasure Palace on P4X347 was the cause. When Cassandra Fraser began suffering from a retrovirus that altered her DNA, she was unable to reverse its effects. SG-1 traveled to Hanka to investigate and were followed back to Stargate Command by Nirti. She attempted to take Cassandra's blood and was captured. A desperate Frazier held Nirti at gunpoint, demanding that the former system lord heal her. When Major General George S. Hammond offered to allow Nirti to leave, Nirti refused, demanding a sample of Cassandra's blood, only to be reminded by Hammond that Frazier was Cassandra's foster mother. Nirti healed Cassandra and was released. 2002 when a team of scientists in Antarctica discovered an ancient woman named Elena in the ice near the second Stargate, she and SG-1 traveled to the Antarctic base. They thawed the remains and were shocked to find that she was still alive. A short time later, Dr. Michaels became ill with an ancient contagion. As other members of the base started to suffer symptoms, including herself, Elena used her healing power to heal everybody but Colonel Jack O'Neill as she began to suffer the effects of the disease herself. When the containment team arrived, they quarantined O'Neill and Elena and took the team back to Stargate Command. She was unable to treat either of them and Elena died. O'Neill was able to be saved by the Tok'ra. 2003 When Jonas Quinn started seeing the interdimensional bugs, she performed a physical and determined he had no brain damage from his exposure to Naquita. When Colonel Jack O'Neill was abducted by the Asgard Loki and replaced by a duplicate that was much younger in age, she performed a DNA analysis and found it was a 99% match. Upon further testing, she discovered that his body was deteriorating and that he would die in a few weeks. With the help of Jacob Carter and Selmak, she was able to determine that he was a clone. When Teal'c was hit in the symbiote patch by a staff blast, she performed surgery to repair the damaged spine and surrounding tissue. Over the next few weeks, she supervised his physiotherapy. When Dr. Daniel Jackson had several consciousnesses downloaded into his mind, she attempted to communicate with the different people. She was frustrated by the Sovereign Martise and indicated that he was arrogant as the Gewald. When Tryon emerged, she was able to get him to explain the situation, and he was certain that his body was dead. The consciousness were purged from Daniel and transferred into Farland. Dr. Fraser was interviewed by Emmett Begman for his Stargate documentary. After the interview, he asked her to lunch, and he was clearly flirting with her. The lunch was cut short by a medical emergency. She traveled to P3X666 with SG-1 and attempted to stabilize the senior airman Simon Wells. In the process of treating him, she was hit by an errant staff weapon blast and killed her instantly. At the memorial service, Major Samantha Carter listed the many lives saved by Frazier, including the whole SG-1 team. Thank you for watching the history of Dr. Janet Frazier. Special thanks to Stargate Wiki for all information you heard today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. If you have, then thank you, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.